We're going to have a very interesting program tonight. Up first is constitutional attorney Jonathan Emord making kind of a special appearance tonight off his normal appearance of the second Monday of each month. Uh, had been able to uh, make arrangements to be with us tonight, which is all very good. There's certainly a lot going on, a lot of crazy things going on. Every time you look at the newspaper, every time you look at the Internet news screen, or even if you watch the mainstream media, it does seem that there are more and more crazy stories about Obamacare out there. Uh, The latest one today, uh, Obama knew that millions, millions would lose their health insurance coverage with his new health plan. Uh, Not a big surprise to any of us who've been watching this for any length of time, but for the people who have lost their health plans and insurance, I think this will come as a little bit of an angering kind of surprise. The issue of Obamacare remains a catastrophe. The three-quarters of a billion dollar uh, internet site is a a joke. Uh, They're talking about actually scrapping the whole thing now and starting over again. The idea that uh, anybody is going to get health insurance with this plan at this point in time is pretty much off the table, or it's teetering on the edge. We also have people who are reportedly, (laughs) they're actually saying that they've called into Obamacare, but when they find out that they're not going to get free health insurance, they want nothing to do with it. This This is reminiscent of those idiots saying, during the first election that put the poseur into the White House, he's going to put gas in my tank. He's going to pay my mortgage. He's going to give me a free cell phone. That was more recent. But you you begin to wonder about people and their basic competency to get themselves fed and clothed every day. And I'm beginning to doubt that the majority will be able to do that much longer at the rate things are going. At any rate, let's say hello to Jonathan Emord. And thanks for being here tonight, Jonathan. It's always good to have you on the program. We learn good to be every with time. You, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, it's crazy out there. Well, it is, and I think uh, it's actually beneficial in many many ways. the The very people you're talking about are coming to the realization that they have been lied to, and it uh, it's it's encouraging what Charles Crothammer has predicted that. Obamacare would just implode, essentially, that it's impossible to maintain because it's so complicated beyond the the ability of the federal government to master. Uh, and in addition, it it, uh, it it it's leading to uneconomic results right and left that dissuade people from being involved in it at all. So the numbers just aren't there and aren't aren't likely to ever be there. And uh, the effect is going to be uh, ever greater desperation on the part of those charged in the government to make it work. Uh, and the likelihood of it, them succeeding over time is not that great. Uh, they're either going to have to dump whole portions of the program uh, that, that the statute calls for, uh, substantially reduce the nature of it uh, so that it is workable, um, or uh, dump the whole thing altogether. And while the uh, partial government shutdown appears to have given Democrats uh, hope that they would be able to take the House, the Obamacare fiasco appears to have even the odds, and it seems to be shifting back in the other direction with people uh, thoroughly disgusted. I mean, we have the president saying uh, from 2010 to 2012, if you like your doctor, or health care plan, you can keep it. And at the very time he's making those statements, uh, the White House was on notice as early as 2010 that over 10 million people would lose their current doctors under Obamacare. And furthermore, they uh, were also on notice that between 40% and 67% of individual policyholders were going to lose their coverage under Obamacare. Some 7 million people at that time. Now, insurance estimates from the experts in the industry suggest that the numbers are more likely to be in the range of 16 million will lose either their employer-based coverage or uh, their individual coverage. What's happening here is that uh, it's the old problem of 
government in general, a one-size-fits-all minimum insurance package that the government politically is mandating with 10 different required coverages, regardless of who you are, and those 10 coverages are not in uh, some 20 million plans that are out there that that people are being notified under the law cannot be maintained for them, and so they're being kicked off of those plans. It's interesting that... uh, these, excuse me, Jonathan, these yeah. notifications are going out right now. People are being kicked off their plans right now. And there is, there is literally no way to get enrolled in Obamacare, according to many people I've read, given the state of the disaster that is their, their entire interface with the public, their website. Well, that's right. Some two million people have already been notified. Uh, According to CBS News, which has done a direct survey of the insurance industry, over 279,000 people have lost their health coverage in California, 140,000 in Michigan, 300,000 in Florida, and over 800,000 in New Jersey, just Uh to name name Uh a few states. These numbers are going to be going up uh, quite a bit over the next several months and years, and um, these people are going to be put in a state of desperation. Um, Presently... Uh, as best as can be discerned, because the administration is refusing to reveal, as was clear today from the testimony of the CMS administrator, Marilyn Travner, at, in Congress, uh, they're refusing to reveal the actual number of people who have enrolled in Obamacare who are not simply being referred off to uh, uh, Medicare or Medicaid, but it appears that the numbers are in the thousands as opposed to tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. So we're talking about a very small number of people actually ponying up money to get into the exchanges uh, and finish uh, to the point where they're, they're paying out money. This is in part due to the, the uh, uh, fiasco with healthcare.gov, uh, but also... It's uh, it's due to the fact that the entire system is so unattractive. Uh, the insurance that's being offered has very high deductibles and has rates that have exceeded in 45 of 50 states uh-huh. the pre-existing rates for insurance before Obamacare. Sure. They, they, by the way, these deductibles, some of them are 10,000? 10, yes. That's, a- that's right. Incredible, and so for most people, it's it's just placing there's no, it right there's out no, of the no insurance. They they right. don't have any. Are you're you paying, get a t- yeah. You're you're paying thousands of dollars a year for insurance that will not kick in in most instances. <laughs> See, this is, and I'll tell you right now, folks, and Jonathan, I think will back me up. This was all known by the people who wrote this. They knew exactly what they were doing. Well, they're 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 attempting to manipulate uh, the story, which is you know they've they've succeeded time and again with typical government programs in manipulating the uh, coverage of it and suggesting success in the presence of failure. Right. And they've tried to do that very same thing here, but the problem is that we have a direct comparison in the private sector, and so the media is not being uh, uh, led to hook, line, and sinker. On this one, actually, this is a case where the mainstream media has been uh, incapable of swallowing their their favorite president's uh, message. And he's blaming, the, the interesting thing is, he's blaming the private contractors. The private contractors are blaming uh, HHS and CMS. And the finger pointing is just making the whole matter appear to be far worse. It, it, is, it is a disaster. And then some. Now, it's fall, and the leaves are turning colors, and oh, are they beautiful. Oranges, yellows, burgundies, reds, greens, just every color you can imagine. It's uh, quite a sight. I imagine our nation's capital has already lost most of its leaves. Jonathan? Well, actually, a lot of them are still here. A good number have fallen, but a lot of them are still here. It really is very, very beautiful. 
outside of the capital area. Inside the capital, it still looks like an armed camp. Since <laughs> it really does. It's, a it's flat, situation. ugly, folks. <laughs> it, is, it used to be it so beautiful. I remember when I first came out to Washington, I would uh, I worked in the House Press Gallery uh-huh. for Don Lambro, a United Features Syndicate reporter uh-huh. who uh, now works for the Washington Times, and. I would sit early morning before I would go into the House Press Gallery. I would sit there on the Capitol lawn and just look at that gorgeous building all lit up in the early morning before the sunrise. Sure. And it was a magnificent uh, thing. You you knew you were in a in a free nation that was tremendous. Now, when you come to Washington, you see all of these monuments surrounded by these huge uh, bunker style. Uh, Concrete, oh, they're concrete barriers. Uh, yes, yeah. And they, 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 and you see the armed uh, presence of of the police everywhere, and it just uh, it looks like a third world country. It it really uh, takes away from the luster of Washington. And, oh, it and destroys it. I agree. It's gone. It does. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not even there, and I can sense it. It's it's over. All right, let's go back to this uh, horror called o- Obamacare. Um, it just, it has to be the most egregious lie in terms of a, a piece of legislation. I No, I can't say that because we've got the, the Patriot Act, we've got NDAA, we've, they're all lies. But the people that write these things aren't dumb. Uh, it's the folks that go, like you, that go through them, that sift, that look, that research, that try to, to pull up the uh, inequities there. Uh, that find the things that have been put in there with great intent and malice aforethought. Some of the language in there is is very clever. You're a, you're an attorney, you know. Uh, they they just packed it well, with that's, stuff. That's true. The aim of this law from the start really was not uh, to provide private insurance, but to lay a platform that would essentially cause people to fall in to a public insurance paradigm. And that's why Obama lied to the American people. That's why he said you can keep your own doctor and your own insurance when he knew that the contrary would happen. He did that with the purpose in mind of causing those very people to fall in through the exchanges and provide the funding necessary to pay for those who couldn't pay for insurance, essentially the ones that would be on the socialized system. He wanted... If you recall, he publicly advocated a single-payer system, which is socialized sure. medicine. Sure. And when he didn't get that, he went for what they all cleverly conspired to create, which was a system that would cause private insurance to falter and, and cause the public insurance option to rear its ugly head again as the only solution. It's the old market failure argument. The insurance industry can't provide you with affordable care, mm-hmm. affordable coverage, so the government will do it. What they didn't calculate, uh, what they didn't plan for, were the technical aspects of this thing that are absolutely overwhelming for the government. When you have 500 million lines of code that have to be rewritten <laughs> in order to <laughs> render the system potentially oh, that's operational, healthcare.gov, and that's just the start of the, you know, the tip of the iceberg on this thing. Once people actually do sign up, they're going to see, I've lost my, my preferred doctor. I'm not covered for things I want. I'm covered for some things that I don't want. I don't have the flexibility anymore. My doctors are now rushing me through at a greater rate as if I were on Medicare, even when I'm not. It, it, the whole system is becoming an absolute mess comparable to what happens in Canada, where we are going to see shortages of, of uh, care in certain areas. We're going to see a physician shortage. How, how many doctors do you even guess have already quit or will be quitting by the first of the year? Thousands and thousands of them. 